Hi guys, I'm Junvert, founder of Matalino. In this video, we are going to talk about the area moment method. This method is primarily used to solve the deflection of beams. But in addition to deflection of beams, this method is also used to solve for the reactions of prop beams, fixed-ended beams, and other form of indeterminate beams. Personally, this is one of my favorite method in solving deflections. So let's jump into the discussion. We have this beam and due to its loadings, it will deflect. And the deflection is represented by its elastic curve. Let us take two points on the beam, say A and B, and draw tangent lines to points A and B. Theta A and Theta B represents the slope of the tangents at points A and B. Our task is to find the change in slope between A and B. To do that, let us take two points at distance x from B, having distance from each other dx. Now let us draw tangent and normal to the first point and tangent and normal to the second point. The two tangents will intersect at this point with central angle d theta and this is the radius of curvature of the elastic curve. dx can be considered as arc of circle of radius rho and central angle d theta. Therefore, dx from our geometry is equal to the radius rho times the central angle d theta. Now, d theta is equal to 1 over rho times dx. From flexor, 1 over rho is equal to m over ei. Substitute m over ei to 1 over rho. Now, our equation involves the moment m of the beam. So, let us draw the moment diagram. We can write our equation now in this way. Then we are going to sum up both sides of the equation. The sum of the theta from point A to point B is the total change in slope between A and B, denoted by theta AB. MDX is the differential area of the moment diagram. If we sum up this differential area from point A to point B, we will get the total area between a and B. It is denoted by area subscript AB. This is our theorem number one in area moment method. The rotation or the total change in slope between the tangents drawn to the elastic curve at any two points C, A and B is equal to 1 over EI multiplied by the area of moment diagram between these two points. The vertical distance between the tangent line and the elastic curve is called the deviation. From the figure, we have this deviation of point B from the tangent line through A. It is denoted by TBA. To find the length of deviation, let us take this differential element dt. Note that the central angle is also d theta. In similar way of how we solve dx, dt is equal to the radial length x times the central angle d theta. Now substitute d theta, which is equal to 1 over rho times dx. Again, substitute 1 over rho is equal to m over ei. Now we can write dt is equal to 1 over ei times x times m dx. And let us sum up both sides of the equation. The sum of dt from a to b is the division of point b from the tangent line through a. And in the right side of the equation, mdx, as we discussed previously, is the area of the moment diagram from point A to point B. And the sum of x from A to B is the centroid of the area measured from point B. This is our theorem number 2 in area moment method. The deviation of point B from the tangent drawn at A is equal to 1 over EI multiplied by the moment of area about B of that region in the moment diagram between points A and B. This is our summary. Theorem number 1. The change in slope between A and B is equal to 1 over EI times the area of the moment diagram between A and B. Theorem number 2. The deviation of point B from the tangent line through A is equal to 1 over EI times the moment of area AB about point B. 
Take note also the rows of sign for the change in slope and the division. Let us say that our reference tangent is the tangent through A. If the rotation is counterclockwise, it is positive rotation. And if the rotation is clockwise, it is a negative rotation. If the point is above the tangent line, it is positive deviation. And if the point is below the tangent line, it is a negative deviation. Take note also that deviation is different from deflection. We have this deviation of point A from the tangent line through B. And note the difference between the TAB and the TBA. I will repeat. The TAB is the deviation of point A from the tangent line through B. And TBA is the deviation of point B from the tangent line through A. And these are the deflections at A and B. To differentiate deflection from deviation, deflection is measured from the neutral axis of the beam to the elastic curve, while the deviation is the vertical distance between the elastic curve and the tangent line. In cantilever beam, however, the deviation is generally the same to the deflection because at the point of support, the tangent line is coincident with the neutral axis. So the distance between the tangent line and the elastic curve is the same distance between the neutral axis and the elastic curve. And this makes the deflection equal to the deviation. Area moment method involves the moment diagram. Fortunately, we're not going to draw the actual moment diagram. But instead, we will simply draw the moment diagram by parts. In most cases, the moment diagram by parts are spandrel. It is the graph of the function y is equal to kx raised to n, where n is an integer greater than or equal to 0. The area of the spandrel is equal to 1 over n plus 1 times b times h, and the centroid barred x is equal to 1 over n plus 2 times b. And the centroid barred y is equal to n plus 1 all over 4n plus 2 times h. In doing area moment method, we only need these two equations, the area and the barred x. If we have a concentrated moment load and we are going to draw the moment diagram of that load, it is simply uniform, meaning rectangle. And if we have a concentrated load, the moment diagram is triangular. Notice that the two shapes, rectangle and triangle, can be considered as spandrels, with n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 respectively. For this type of loadings, we don't need the formula for spandrel, because we are familiar with the area of the rectangle and the area of the triangle and also the centroids. But when it comes to uniform load, we will have a moment diagram which is a parabolic spandrel. Now the spandrel formula is useful. Especially when the load is triangular, we have a cubic spandrel. We really need the formula for that area and bar x. Now let us go to our example. We have this cantilever beam. The width of cross section is 50 mm and the depth is 150. And the modulus of elasticity is also given, that is 69 gigapascal. It is required to find the maximum deflection of this beam. Of course, the maximum deflection will occur at the free end. Let us draw the approximate elastic curve. And at the fixed support, the tangent line to the elastic curve is horizontal. Let us call the endpoints of the beam A and B. We can find the deflection by finding this deviation, because they are equal. Reaction at A, 4 times 1. Moment at A, that is 4 times 1 times 2.5 as moment arm. Take note that moment at A is negative. It is indicated by the downward rotation in our figure. We have this formula for the deviation. The modulus of elasticity A is 69,000 megapascal. The moment of inertia I is equal to 50 times 150 cube all over 12. Let us now draw the moment diagram by parts. And let us take point B as our moment center. Due to RA, the moment diagram is triangular and its magnitude is 3 times RA that is equal to 12. 
Due to moment at A, the moment diagram is uniform, that is negative 10. And due to that 4 kN per meter uniform load, the moment diagram is a second degree spandrel. Magnitude, 4 times 1 times 0.5, that is equal to negative 2. These three points are the centroids of the areas. Distance from point B, 1 meter, 1.5 meters, and 0.25 meter. Recall that barred x of a spandrel is equal to 1 over n plus 2 of b. In here, our b is equal to 1, and our n is equal to 2. The division TBA is equal to 1 over 69,000 times the i. We have the area of the triangle, 1 half, base is 3, altitude is 12, times barred x, 1, minus the rectangle, 3 by 10, moment arm, 1.5, minus the parabolic spandrel, 1 third times 1 times 2, moment arm, 0.25. Now the units in our equation are not consistent. Note that A is in megapascal or newton per mm squared and I is mm raised to 4. While the quantities inside the bracket, we have base is meter, altitude is kilonewton meter, and moment arm is meter. Therefore, the unit is kilonewton meter cube. We are going to convert kilonewton meter cube into newton mm raised to 3. Now, to convert kilonewton to newton, multiply by 1000. And to convert meter to millimeter, multiply also by 1000. So for kilonewton meter cube, we are going to multiply that by 1000 raised to 4 to convert it into newton mm cube. We have the deviation equal to negative 28. And from the figure, it is also equal to the maximum deflection of the beam. This video is first in the series about area moment method. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. In the upcoming videos of this series, we are going to discuss how to use this method in solving prop beams and fixed-ended beams. And we are going to answer the very common question on where should the moment center be? And let us see the advantage and disadvantage of this method in relation to another method of solving deflections. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned something and please share this video.